Anyway, from Edinburgh, uh, his new native home type thingy, about 50 miles away type thingy, is Mark Burgess. Are you there, Mark? Yes. How are you keeping? All right. All right. Top hole. Mark, so, uh, I mean, there's going to be people out there who aren't aware of the cult status that you've achieved with, uh, with the Chameleons. <laughs> The Chameleons are a massive Manchester band, and I always do the comparison uh, with the Stone Roses in one particular way, in that the fervour and the adulation in Manchester was like uh, unparalleled, really, and you, you were really flying high, you signed to Geffen, and then... <whistles> all went horribly peaked on, didn't it? What yeah. Ha what happened? Well, John and I left the band. John left first, and then I kind of followed him. John Lever, the later. drummer. John Lever was the drummer, yeah. I Terrible followed. timing, though. I mean, really, you had it all within your grasp there. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the major deal. And as I say, I mean, it had to it had to break. You could see, it, again, the comparison with the Stone Roses. You could see it happening in Manchester, and you knew it was going to spread out. And I went to see the Chameleons at the Free Trade Hall, mm. and uh, it was like Beatlemania, you know. And I thought, well, you know, this. Is, uh, I, I didn't know much about you at the time. I thought, there's something going on here. Yeah. And uh, and then, of course, nothing went on. You all, you all went your different ways. It must have been like the, the best case of bad timing possible. Possible. Yeah, well, it, it, you know, it was, you know, I mean, when we started out, we were really, really good mates, and that was, that was the, the, the heart of the group, and then it seemed that we'd stopped being mates somewhere along the line, and it was like, you know, it became career thing, and um, I just felt, you know, that that wasn't the reason why I wanted to be in the band, really. Right, I mean, it's, sort of, it's un, uh, unquestionable that like, you have received cult status, because did you see that in the, in the Melody Maker, I think it was, a few weeks ago? The Chameleons, whatever's happened to them, yes. please name all the record. I mean, you know you've made it when that happens, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, as, I'm, as, I'm as really surprised as, that it's gone that way as, as anybody. Um, as I say, it's never really been a motivation. Career has never been the, the, you know, that important. It's, it's always been music, first and foremost, and so... Um, you know, I really thought, you know, I didn't really think it was going to go like that. You know, it was, I don't really understand it myself, pr totally. So you, you don't think you and the, the other chameleons are going to be best, uh, best of bosom pals, I think? You're, I, you're working with John, aren't you, again in the future? Well, I'm supposed to be, but he just phoned me the other night and said he's broke his hand. So, I mean, <laughs> hopefully, he's, he, um, by the time, you know, I get everything together, uh, it'll be right again. Right, now after the chameleons you went on your form The Sun and the Moon and that didn't last either, did it? I mean, it sounds like a, a, a tragedy, it's like Shakespearean almost. What happened there? Um, the same thing really, you know, it was just, I mean, I was just wanted to make music with, with, with friends and, uh, and found that I was, I was just being used as a quick way to get a record deal, which I didn't really take very kindly to, so uh, I split again, you know. Right, and yeah. now you're on a solo deal, so presumably you can't split, can you? Because well, you're on your own and, I you know... Actually, I haven't got a deal, which is really strange, because all these records are coming out, you know, left, right and centre, but I'm not actually under contract to anybody, and I've never been happier in my life, so, I mean, that must tell you something, really. Well, absolutely. I mean, all the men in the big suits, who needs them? Really? Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, as I say, you, you've got the, the solo uh, non-deal together, and you've got the solo <laughs> record coming out, and you're actually living, uh, the, living the life of the country squire at the moment, aren't you, in Scotland? Yeah, yeah sort of, yeah. Ish, ish. Ish, ish. Tell us about that. We went camping up in Northumbria and answered this advert in the paper for this guy who was looking out for somebody to uh, help renovate this place. He, he bought this place. He'd been renovating it for two years and on the inside and he was starting on the grounds and stuff and just needed a hand. And they had this like lodge place, lodge cottage. So we answered the advert and went to meet them and the day after he said, you know, you can move in whenever you like. So we, we kind of lived there and, and helped this guy reclaim this, all this property. You know, it's all kind of ramshackle and overrun and... Um, in return for the rent, we just give him a lift, you know, for a few hours a week. And it's it's a very equitable arrangement, you know. Actually, now, I mean, we're going to do this interview in two parts, because we're dead organised. I know what I'm going <laughs> to do next, you know, even though it doesn't sound as I do. And uh, the other half of the interview, really, is going to be centred around UFOs, because I know you've got uh, some kind of involvement with, uh, with that side of the shenanigans. But that must be a good place to spot UFOs, out in the woods, in the borders. I would have thought there'd be loads of them, like a motorway of them going through there, wouldn't there? Um, <laughs> Well, it's funny you should say that, Mark, actually, because um, there is a bit of a flat going on up here. Um, th there's uh, been quite a lot of, of space being given, a lot of attention in the UFO field to a place called Bonnie Bridge, where they've had allegedly 200 sightings in the last few months. Um, I've been to Bonnie Bridge and can't imagine why on earth... Um, <laughs> they might have all been by one bloke who's a loony. Probably, maybe, yes. Um, but there is a kind of really ancient Roman settlement up there. There's the Antonine Wall, which runs for about a mile, and no Roman fort. And there is, there, t there does tend to be quite a, a connection, it seems, between like very ancient places and um, UFO flaps.
Right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll listen to one of your tunes now, and then we'll draw ourselves back into this weird and wonderful world of UFOs. How does that sound? Sounds good to me, mate. Yeah. Brilliant. Sounds this good. is World on Fire, Mark Burgess. Great, world on fire there, Mark Burgess. Now, uh, now we, we were supposed to we were supposed to do this in two halves, and I said that I knew what I was doing, but obviously we got into UFO in the first half. But you know, you can't keep a good story down. <laughs> That's my motto on this alien flavour cult radio. Now, Mark, do you actually believe in UFOs, or is a uh, is there a sceptic in there trying to get out? Do I believe in UFOs? Um, do I believe in UFOs? I, I've seen some things in the skies that I don't have. I don't believe have conventional explanations. What exactly was it that you saw? Um, was it a ship? Was it a fella? No, was no, it? no. It wasn't. I didn't see flying saucers or anything. No, just um, massive explosions of colour, cloud illuminations from inside of clouds, roaring away at terrific speeds. I mean, the whole thing lasted. The whole thing lasted for about fifteen minutes um, in a remote area of Scotland, and um, it was just the most incredible thing that I'd ever seen and that I don't believe that there is any conventional explanation for, for what I experienced. Well, not that it freaked I me out. I was in shock for about six months. Really? Know? I mean, yeah, it no. does. I mean, I'm not, I'm not drawing any great comparison. and I certainly have never had the drug, but uh, it said that LSD often has <laughs> the same effect. And, and it says that LSD merely opens up different avenues of the mind yeah. that, uh, that aren't generally there. I mean, is there any possibility that something had happened and your mind had decided without the use of LSD? No, I hadn't been I, spiked with hallucinogens. I wasn't on anything. I hadn't been drinking. Uh, or anything. I was, I was, com I was completely straight. And you were con completely convinced that it was an experience of this kind. Of course, yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. Right. And now, do, does this sort of the UFO fact that that sort of uh, influence your writing and your music at all? Wonky Alice are big fans of yours. Now, all their stuff's about space. Um, I suppose it must do. I'm not aware. I don't consciously do it. It's. Uh, I look at something that that I've done, I c in retrospect, and I can see various things in there but i'm not consciously i wasn't consciously influenced but i suppose it must have something i mean yeah of course like i said i was in shop for six months it's got to influence you i would have thought so if you if you were offered the chance on going off uh, on a spaceship for a couple of weeks do you think you'd bother yeah i'd love to yeah i'd like to go from the shuttle or something yeah well uh, well hang on I mean, we have got the airwaves here all to ourselves i right. mean uh where exactly will you well, tell, tell everybody where you'll be tomorrow roughly speaking aliens i mean obviously a load of mark burgess fans are going to yeah really to Go on, but yeah, well, if they want to look me up, yeah, um, um, I'll be in the, I'll be in, uh, I'll be in the borders, um, just outside Duns, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put, I paint a big X on the roof so that they can see me from the, from the air. And if they want to take me up and show me Earth from orbit, I'd be very grateful. Well, he's quite a big fella, <laughs> and he's got long black hair. Yeah. So, uh, well, the gauntlet has been thrown down once again. Crucial, really? cutting edge radio, cult radio, alien flavour type thing. Yes. Go get Mark Burgess tomorrow. Yes. Read about it in all the papers the day after. Yes. But none of the weird, none of the weird probing sexual stuff, thanks. Just, just the shaking hands will do fine. Yeah, no, they, they, all that can come to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I've got short hair and a big nose, and yeah. uh, I'll be outside broadcasting House Manchester with no trousers on <laughs> on Thursday afternoon. Right. Yeah. We want. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> Oh, I'm always careful. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so what's the last tune? Uh, last tune. What's the last tune of the night then, Mark? Hey. That you've chosen for us here. Uh, it just rings a bell there somewhere. Rose right? Rumble by the fall. Oh, yeah. And what did you choose that one for then? Um, was it for the backing vocals? <laughs> yeah. Or the rhythm guitar? It was, it's, it's a classic single. Very evocative of the times. Very good. Represents very good times for me. The whole, that whole time was, was really good. I, really good. Uh, recorded at Cargo, a place very, very close to my heart. Um, and a, a classic record, what can I say? Well, it brings back memories of a good time for you. Can't say it does the same for me. Ouch! Roche yeah. Rumble, The Fall. Uh, this one is falling. <laughs>